Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage here in Seattle for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon 2018. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman, host of theCUBE. Three days of live coverage, wall to wall, 8,000 people here, doubled from the previous event in North America, expanding globally. We're here with Liz Rice, technology analyst at, evangelist at Aqua Security and program co-chair here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon. Liz, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I know you had a busy day, keynotes and all, yeah. a lot of activity, a lot of handshaking, <laughs> uh, walking around, very crowded. It is, we're packed, I mean, we're absolutely at capacity here, and you know, the event sold out, and it's busy. <laughs> a lot of energy, real quick, I know you guys did a lot of work, uh, you guys always do a great job, uh, exceptional performance again, Thank you. CNCF does a great job on the content programming. It is about the open source communities. That's fundamental. A lot of end users both participating and consuming. The vendor list is expanding. Putting that program together gets challenging when you have this kind of numbers. So oh. what were the themes? How did you put it all together? What was resonating? What, what's, the, what's the focus? Yeah, I mean it was so hard. We had uh, so many applications that we could only accept 13%, which it, it makes it you know, almost impossible, some of the decisions that you have to make. And uh, some of the themes that were coming out were like K-native, a lot of submissions around K-native. Uh, serverless in general obviously being quite a hot topic, I would say, across our industry. Really great talks from end users, and we've seen a few on the keynote stage where it, you know, there's some brands that we're all aware of, people like Airbnb, sharing their stories of what they've done to make their their deployments, their cloud native deployments, their use of Kubernetes, successful. So it's not just, oh yeah, we're kicking the tires and doing a, a, you know, a, some experiments. They are telling us how they've done this for real. You had a very great. successful uh, uh, KubeCon in Copenhagen. Mm. And so how did you iterate from Copenhagen to here? What were some of the inefficiencies? Obviously the bigger numbers mm. here. You recently had China as a success where where we've reported on SiliconANGLE, the open source consumption and, and contribution is off the charts, it's huge. Oh, it's yeah. growing and it's a new dynamic. So between you know, China and Copenhagen, here, interesting things happening. Yeah, We're, China was phenomenal for me. I mean, it was my first trip to China, so it was eye-opening in all sorts of respects. And one of the really interesting things there was the use of uh, machine learning. So uh, the uses of Kubeflow, uh, real life examples. Again, I, I mean, I think there's something about how much data they've been able to collect in China, but we heard some really great stories of, uh, for example, electricity companies using machine learning on Kubernetes to predict demand. It was, it was a lot of adoption. Yes. They're in the front really. end. They had a mobile culture. IoT's booming over there. Yep. It's just massive. Absolutely. All right, here in yeah, Seattle, obviously Seattle, home of AWS, mm. um, and I was talking to some folks here locally in Seattle just this morning, they said they think this is the biggest conference of the year here in Seattle, <laughs> which is really telling yeah. where you guys have come from. So, you know, interesting dynamic, a lot of new ecosystem partners. What's, the, what's, what's happening? It seems to be energy, the buzz, there's a, there's a subtext here that's uh, buzzing around the hallways. What's, what's the most important thing that people should be taking away from this event this year? I think that the scale of it is coming from real adoption and you know, businesses that are moving their, their applications into the cloud, um, public cloud and hybrid cloud, and finding success through doing that with cloud native components. Um, you, you know, you mentioned the, the end users who want to be part of the community and they're actually wanting to contribute to the community. And you can look around the hall and see booths from, uh, like Uber's over there. Like, they're really contributing to this community and um, it's not just a bunch of enthusiasts, it's, it's, it's for Problems real. being solved, real, yeah. real, yeah. real company, end users. Yeah. So Liz, one of the things 
you know, we've been looking at, this is not a monolith here. You've actually got a whole lot of communities. As I've been wandering mm -hmm. the floor, if I'm talking to people, uh, we had Matt to come on to talk about Envoy. And yeah. uh, you know, they, they had their own you know, conference at the beginning of the week, mm -hmm. and they had 250 people. As I'm wandering around, you talk to a number of, uh, in, it's like, oh, I'm here all about Helm. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, there, 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 there's different you know, service meshes all over the place everybody's talking yeah, about. Yeah, another big um, theme. And I mean, you're heavily focused on the security aspects right. there. Uh, I believe uh, you, you've got a project that Aqua has been involved in. Um, uh, it was uh, Cube Hunter. If I, I yeah, I, I, I've got it. Maybe before you talk about Cube Hunter, just talk about you know balancing the you know this isn't one community. It's gotten really big. Do we need to you know break this into a microservices based show that just <laughs> has you know okay we'll have the core, but we have lots of other things and spread it out all over the world. It's uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a real challenge. As this community is growing so fast, and trying to keep, you know, the community feel, uh, balancing what the, you know, the contributors want to do, and and making sure they're having, you know, getting value and having the conversations they want, but also enabling the vendors and the end users and and every constituent part to get something good out of this conference. It's a challenge as this gets bigger. I mean, there's no, there's no kind of, if this was doubles again, will it feel the same? That's, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. So uh, we've got to think we, carefully we've, about we've how to We've seen that happen, it would not. If it, right. if, even from last year to this year, was a big change for, yeah. for, for, for a lot of people. For sure, um, for but, sure. So maybe, uh, so Cube Hunter, tell, tell us yeah, about that. Yeah, Cube Hunter, yes. So um, Cube Hunter is one of our open source projects at, at Aqua, and it's basically penetration testing for Kubernetes clusters. So it's uh, written in Python, it attempts to uh, make network requests, looking for things like uh, the open ports. Uh, it will tell you if you've got some misconfigurations, because a lot of the security issues with Kubernetes can come about through poor configuration. And the other thing you can do, you, well, you can run it from externally to your cluster. You can also run it inside a pod inside your cluster. And then that's simulating what might happen if an attacker got into your cluster, what could they do from there? They compromised a pod, which could happen through a software vulnerability. Once they're in the pod, how vulnerable are you? What's the blast radius of that attack? And Cube Hunter can help you see whether it's a complete disaster or actually fairly contained. All right. Liz. You know how are we doing if, if, from a security standpoint? You know we we watched the container the, the the rise of containers over the last few years, and it's like okay, wait, do I need to put it in some kind of lightweight VM? Do I do mm. something there? Um, you know, how, what can I trust? What do I do? At AWS uh, uh, reinvent a couple of weeks ago. There's the whole container marketplace, and yeah. feels like we're making progress, but still plenty of work to do. Uh, you know, right, right, and container security has lots of parts to it as you go through the life cycle of a container. Um, actually at the AWS uh, reInvent, Aqua was recognized as having, I think they called it competency, which does, you know, I, I think it's a bit better than competency, but yeah, uh, in container security. Uh, it's, um, it, that, that's a compliment, I believe. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like really compliment, yeah, really competent. Um, yeah, so uh, I think as a, community and at the open source level, there are lots of good things happening. So, uh, for example, the defaults in Kubernetes have been getting better and better. If you are an enterprise, and particularly if you know, you're a financial user or a media company or you know, government organization, you have much stronger requirements from a security perspective, and that's where you, you, the open source tooling on its own may not be sufficient and you may need to plug in commercial solutions like Aqua to really beef that up. And also to provide that end-to-end -end, uh, security right from when you're building your image through to the runtime protection, which is yeah. really powerful. And security's got to be built in from the beginning. I'd love to get your thoughts on End use the end user traction, a huge demand for what end users are doing. I know you guys are seeing on the program side, the Linux Foundation, CNCF was talking about trying to get more case studies. We're seeing the end users prominent here. You mentioned Uber, Apple's here, a bunch of other companies. Yeah. They're here. Mm -hmm. So end users are not only just contributing, they're also consuming. Absolutely. How are the new enterprises that are coming in consuming and interacting and engaging with Kubernetes? How, how, where are they on the 
on the IQ, if you will, level, um, and, and what are they engaging on? I mean, because Kubernetes has matured a bit and ready, it's mm -hmm. being deployed, people mm -hmm. are using it, mm -hmm. uh, people are gathering around it, but now people are starting to consume and deploy it yeah. at different scales. Yeah. What, what's the end user uptake? What's the hot areas? What do you see the most people digging in? Great question. So I think we, you know, we're seeing a lot of, uh, particularly these, uh, I want to say like mature startups. So the Ubers and the Airbnbs and the, um, the Lyfts, you know, they've got these massive scaled technology problems and Kubernetes is giving them, and the whole cloud native kind of uh, community around it, um, it's giving them the ability to do these kind of custom things that they need to do, the, the kind of weird and wonderful things, they can add whatever adaptations they need that maybe they wouldn't get if they were in a traditional architecture. Um, so they're kind of the prominent voices yeah. that we're hearing right now. Um, but at Aqua, we're seeing you know, some of these, maybe what you might call more traditional businesses like banks, who they, they want to replicate that, right? They want to ship functionality really quickly. They, yeah. They're seeing challenges from upstart, you know, yeah. and they, they want to compete, so they know they've got to ship functionality quickly. They've got to do continuous yeah. deployment. Containers enable that. The whole cloud native world enables that, and, and that's where the adoption. So they from. can take the blueprints from the people who built it from the ground up, mm. the large scale mm. startups, cloud mm. native from the beginning, mm. Mm. and kind of apply the traditional IT kind of approach yeah. with the same tooling yeah. and the same platform. And we're seeing some interesting things around making that easier. So things like the CNAB, the cloud native application bundling that uh, is coming out of Microsoft and, and Docker are involved mm. in that. And I think that's all to do with making it easier for enterprises to just go, yeah, this is the application, I want to run it. In, in the cloud. So let me ask you a question um, around the customer end users that we see coming on board, because you got the open, you got the upstream kind of community. The downstream benefits are impacting certainly IT and then developers, right, the classic developers. IT is starting to reimagine their infrastructure, all the goodness is with cloud and, and machine learning and application is being redefined. It's changing the investment. So in 2019, what's your view on how companies are shaping their investment strategy to IT investment or technology investment strategies with cloud native because this is real trend that you just pointed out which is, okay, I'm a big company and I've used the old way, now I want the new way. Yeah. And so there's a lot of, okay, instant start, turn the key, there's a run, and there's a lot of managed services here. So there's a new, a new persona mm. of customer. Mm. How does that impact their, their investment, uh, IT investments in your mind? What, what are you oh. seeing, can you share any color commentary around that? I'm sure we're all aware that we're seeing shifts, you know, away from the traditional data center into public cloud, which has kind of implications around OPEX rather than CAPEX. Um, and I guess following on from that, people worrying about whether vendor lock-in is a thing. You know, yeah. sh should they be just adopting one public cloud or perhaps, uh, you know, putting their eggs across different baskets? Should they be using these managed platforms? We have all these different distributions, we have all these different uh, yeah, managed solutions for Kubernetes, there's a lot of choice out there. Um, I think that's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out over the next few years. Are, are all these different yeah. distributions going to find a niche, or, yeah. or how's that going to work? Yeah, Matt Klein had a great observation he's on earlier today from Lyft. He says, look, solve a problem. Use the tech to solve a problem and then iterate, build on that. So mm -hmm. It's the it's iteration model of DevOps. So that's kind of a, I think that I, I think that's a good starting point. There's no magic silver bullet here. There's no magic Absolutely. answer. I think it's more of just get in there, get it going. The other question I have for you is 2019 prediction for Kubernetes. What's going to happen this coming year? We, if we're seeing this picture now, 8,000 people, diverse audience. Yeah. What's the prediction in 2019 for Kubernetes? Oh. <laughs> Great question. I think maybe broader than just Kubernetes, but the, the kind of cloud native, because uh, Kubernetes is, like uh, Janet said in her keynote this morning, it's essentially boring. It kind of does what it's supposed to do now. Um, I think what's going to be interesting is seeing those other pieces around it and above it. The um, improved developer experiences, making it easier for companies to adopt, um, Maybe some of these, uh, maybe 
choices around things like what service mesh you're going to use, how you're going to implement your observability, how you're going to deploy all this stuff without needing to hire you know, 20 super detailed experts. Because not you know, we've got all the experts in yeah. this stuff, they're kind of here. Yeah. And uh, the early adopters, great. Maybe yeah. that next wave, how are they going to be able to take advantage of this cloud? Yeah, I think it's programmability is key. Yeah. Well, great and to I have think a big part of that actually is going to be serverless. Right? Yeah. The ease of using serverless rather than the flexibility that you get out yeah. of the millisecond latency around compute. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Final question for you. Okay. Um, what surprised you this year? Is there one thing that jumped out at you that you didn't <laughs> expect? Um, good, bad, or ugly? Just great show here, and, the, and it was packed, and waiting list was like 1,500. What's the surprise this year from a program standpoint? What was the? Um, I think actually the nicest surprise was the contribution of Fippy and uh, you know all those lovely characters from uh, Fippy goes to the zoo and and that those characters being donated by Microsoft Matt Butcher and Karen Chu's work it's terrific and so it's just beautiful it's lovely that's awesome thanks so much Liz appreciate it. Liz right here program co-chair at KubeCon Cloud Native Con also technology evangelist at Aqua Security that's her day job and her other <laughs> job she's running the content program which is very huge here congratulations I know it's tough work a great job thank, thank you thank you very much it's the Cube coverage breaking down all the action here at KubeCon and Cloud Native Con I'm Jeff Stu Miniman stay with us three days of wall to wall coverage we're on only on day two got a whole nother day a lot of great stories coming out of here and great content stay with us for more after this short break